Hi, this is Jim Callaghan, European Editor at World's Best Golf Destinations. Today I'm with Paul Larson, who's the Head Greenkeeper at Royal St George's. Paul, welcome. Uh, it's four weeks today to the start of the 149th uh, Open Championship. How well are you prepared for what's coming up? Yeah, we're quite well prepared at the moment. We've had uh, 33 mil of rain last night, which has really helped. So that can help us put the finesse into the course now, a little bit more cutting. We can go a little bit lower now. Uh, yeah, really doing well, actually. Okay, how long have you been head greenkeeper at Royal St George's? Uh, since 2012. Uh, I, I came in 2011 as deputy. I sort of swapped roles uh, 2012 to become head. Uh, so what's that? Nine years. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, how has working with the RNA changed your mindset and the planning for the the Open? Ah, uh, good question. Well, I've kind of been working with the RNA for ten years now since the last Open. So we're in regular contact all the time. We did a lot of work with the STRI before, but since then. Um, the R&A have got their in-house agronomists and it just happens to be that the guy I've worked most closely with has been Alistair Beggs. So I've worked with Alistair for the last 10 years so it's just sort of formulated into us being a bit of a partnership. We do, we just run everything by each other. Sort of a team effort really. Okay. Did the r and suggest any changes to the course? Uh, we've, we've yeah, we had a few changes. Uh, that we always agree it's not just the RNA, it's a club thing as well. So when we go out, we look to see what would be better. Should we take some bunkers out, add some bunkers? Uh, so we have done a few things. Uh, there's a joint consultation between us, I guess. And uh, at the end of the day, I'd say the club still have the, the final say if they think it's a good idea. Which so far, everything we've done has worked really well, so it's good. So how did last year's postponement affect you and the staff? Yeah, uh, a good question again. It, it's given us an extra year to prepare. Uh, I think basically with the, the virus and everything that was going on at that time, my mind wasn't focused on the Open. I kind of knew we are definitely not going to have an Open with everything that was going on. So it was just keeping everyone healthy, just survive and do everything that we had to do to survive the virus and everything. Then after that, you know, uh, things started to look a bit better. I was lucky the club uh, let me get all the guys back to work when everyone was on the next lockdown. Uh, so our mindset, yeah, it did change, but it just made us more determined to try and get it better for this year. Okay. Um, how will the influx of additional manpower for the Open work for you? Yeah, well, there's another difficult one. Uh, generally, normally you'd have 45, maybe up to 50 green keepers as uh, tournament support for the two weeks leading up to it. Um, we're still sort of planning what to do. I've got 20 guys that are from local golf clubs that are going to help us, which has kind of not been done before. Um, and they're all going to come in, help us prepare, set everything up, but then they're going to go back and go back to their own clubs. No one's going to stay on site this year, which in the past we've always had like bunker bins or accommodation. Everyone's always been around, so I've been camping on the course for two weeks. None of that this year. Um, so definitely difficult. Um, and that's probably been the hardest thing to prepare. So in the evenings, normally you'd have a lot of people helping do stuff like that. So we've got my team. I've got a secondary support team of another nine or 10 people who could be here in the evenings. Obviously, we still haven't been told exactly what's gonna happen regarding the spectators and uh, all of the little protocols that are gonna have to be in place. So we're still up in, in the air about exactly how it's going to work, but yeah, I've still got a total of about 45 to 48. Okay, so what are your plans once the Open is done and dusted? Uh, well, I'm hoping that we could all have Monday off and uh, just kind of get someone to go out and just do the basics. So uh, yeah, we're going to have a night out on Sunday night. Uh, I haven't really planned too much. We've got club championships the Saturday afterwards, so they want the course the same as the Open. So uh, 
no immediate holidays or anything, but maybe I'll have a nice three week break in the winter. So how, how, will, how will that affect your club championships? Will the, the infrastructure have been uh, yeah. dismantled yeah. around about the players? Yeah, I think, you know, a few days after they start taking it all down, but I think it'll be a month or maybe just less. So they will have to um, put up with all that, but some of the infrastructure will be up. So maybe it'll look good for the guys when they play, play in it. And yeah. women as well. So who, who, will, who will carry out the remedial work to the course once the infrastructure's gone? <sighs> yeah, I. It, it all depends how much work there is to do. Uh, hopefully, the last Open we did it all ourselves. Um, if it's stuff that we can do, we we'll probably will do it. If um, we need to do a bit more, we might get some people in to help us. How has hosting the Open benefited you and your team? Yeah, it's, do you know what? I suppose it's the next level of green keeping. What, uh, what you have to do that little bit extra finesse, just from an everyday club. Uh, it's it's that extra bit of presentation, I guess. It's just the standards that you probably don't expect. A great example for me is changing holes and the white painting. I changed the holes in the last open, and I've changed holes for years. But leading up to that open, I hadn't really done a major championship. Uh, and then when I realised the sort of difference that they wanted with the whole painting and the cutting of the holes and everything, I realised it's I wasn't as good as what I could be. So we've upped our game. We learned back then to get it better and. It's little things like that that you don't know until you've actually done the tournaments that the, the level that's required. Okay, Paul, that's that's it for now. Thank you very much, and I wish you every success in four weeks' time when the Open starts. And like everybody else, I'll be watching it on the television. Oh, thank you. Thank Cheers. you.